few of even the most passionate of golf fans know the name John Shippen because his story and his place in the history of the game have long been overlooked. But here in Detroit at the Rocket Mortgage Classic, his name and legacy are on full display. Welcome to the 2023 The John Shippen presented by Rocket Mortgage. I'm Roger Steele. And I'm Shasta Averyhart. The John Shippen National Invitational, a competition between the nation's top amateur and professional black golfers, is comprised of two women's events vying for three LPGA tournament starts. And the winner of the men's competition earns a spot into the PGA Tour's Rocket Mortgage Classic. I recently sat down with Summer Woods, the John Shippen Tournament lead, to discuss the need for equity in the golf space and the event now in its third year. I want to dive into, you know, why design the John Shippen National Invitational? Working in the industry, playing the game, you see a lot of the inequities within the space. And so it was an opportunity for partnership with Intersport to create something, to leverage resources that we have with the PGA Tour and relationships we have with the LPGA Tour. So our goal from the beginning was to be very direct and intentional about who we wanted to benefit because we wanted to be inclusive of the diaspora. So that's people from Africa, people from islands, um, people from the South, people that went to HBCUs, went to PWIs, black professional, men and women, and amateurs as well. Why is giving access and opportunity important? You know, access and opportunity is important because as you know, reflection of seeing yourself is important, right? And so I love the fact that you know, our golfers can come out here and be in a safe space and be able to just be unapologetically themselves. Would you mind explaining how the John Shippen eliminates obstacles for men and women participating? Our goal was, hey, let's look at everything that could be an obstacle, an obstruction for the golfers to come here to play. And let's eliminate those. And working in this space, we always use this example of the conversation of equal versus equity. I laugh because I'm like, I don't want equal, I want equity. And so I give the example of what size shoe do you wear? 10. Okay, I wear eight. If equal is, I'm gonna give you an eight and I'm gonna have an eight. What you gonna do with my size eight shoe? Struggle. Struggle, right? So that means you gotta get your 10, I gotta have my size eight, right? right? And so that's what equity is, is giving people what they need in order to be successful. It's not just for us as black golfers or blacks within the space, but it's also for everyone to understand what the challenges are so that we, everybody adjusts. It right. can't just be us adjusting. Everybody has to be able to adjust and understand what the challenges are within the space too. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Of the 22 players in the men's invitational field, five of them proudly rep college golf at the highest level, from HBCUs to Power 5 schools. The representation specifically in Power 5 or collegiate golf or even professional, just for kids to know that that's an outlet for them, that's a sport that they can take part in, and it's cool. A lot of times golf gets wrapped up in maybe not being as cool as football or basketball, but I think that's something maybe we can change. I was fortunate enough to have Andrew Walker as my teammate, and that was really special because there's not many of us in Power 5 golf, but to have two African Americans on the same team, it was awesome. So for me, just getting to play on that high of a level and showing kids that they can play at that level and just open up doors behind me is really special. So especially at San Jose State, we compete with a great schedule and I get to see the best guys in college golf. I've been competing against the best guys all year, so I feel like I'm very well prepared. With his senior year on the horizon, academic All-American Chris Stiles is proof that no dream is too big to chase. I did have to go through some obstacles to get to the stage that I'm at now. Streets won't grow as long as we doubt it. Playing at San Jose State, good amount of the time I am the only African American in the field. He has run into things that, uh, you know, perhaps I wouldn't see. The ball and the club, they don't know what color his skin is. And at the end of the day, it's the, it's the guy that posts the lowest score. I'm as equal as everyone else out there, even though that my skin color may be a little bit darker than the other players in the field, I'm still going out there to compete with the best of the best. And I don't look at it as a race issue anymore. It's more of, can I go out there and perform? 
my goal is to make a living on the PGA Tour. It's gonna be a dream come true once it happens. I'm gonna speak it into existence. Whoa. John Shippen, it's a very great opportunity to showcase my talent. Playing against these guys are preparing me for the next level. I'm the youngest in the field, so I kind of carry that under my wing. The goal for me in golf was always to get a college scholarship. Hey. Coach. What's happening? Nothing much. I knew about five minutes into meeting Chris that I needed him on my team. Fight for your dreams, better go to war. My parents were not gonna be able to afford for me to go to college, and I knew that at the age of five or six. When my dad told me it's gonna be hard, he gave me a 44 inch driver at the age of five. The chances you make contact with that type of club is very rare, but I did, and it went right down the middle of the range with a draw, and ever since then, that was it. When I first met Chris, he came up for a visit and became quite apparent that he had a strong belief in himself. As a golf coach, you're hoping for grit. You're hoping that's part of their character. You don't really know until you get out there. Mr. Styles here has it. Coach Kennedy has taken me under his hands and has put me in the spotlight. Don't get me started. Bank on me, still going the hardest. Win, lose, a draw, can't fall regardless. <laughs> Just to be the first Styles to attend a four-year university, let alone graduate, will be an accomplishment. Grit is, I, I, I don't want to say you can't teach it, but it, it certainly helps if it comes from the family. And, and he certainly had a wonderful family and a, a very strong upbringing that has led to that belief in himself. My mom, is, she's like my best friend. She's done some amazing things for me, like working two shifts when I was younger and providing for the family when things were not up to par when they needed to be. And the dream of her watching her son walk across the stage at a four-year university is still in the back of my head today. I'm actually interning at Adobe this summer for financial planning analysis. So I'm trying to excel not just in golf, but outside of golf too. He's got the type of character to withstand any type of speed bump along the way in whatever venue, be it golf, business, Chris is gonna be a tremendous success. It's been quite obvious, both in the classroom and out here, being a, an academic All-American last year, and he'll do that again this year. That's not an easy thing to get. At the age of 20, there's a lot of time left, and not ready to pull the trigger on the game of golf yet, which I never will be. Just extremely happy just to be out there and have these opportunities in front of me. I'd love to be the role model for people to look up to. If you really want something, there's always a way to get it done. Don't sell yourself short of your dreams. Go out there and get it. It can really take time, don't show you how to do it. Even through it, I'll stay strong, don't lose it. Even through it, I'll stay strong, don't lose it. Lose, lose, lose. Who was John Shippen Jr.? Who was John Shippen Jr.? Who was John Shippen Jr.? Born in 1879. A son of a slave. He was a dreamer. A teenage caddy. A student of the game. He was a natural talent. The first American U.S. Open competitor. He was a waymaker. The first U.S. born golf professional. He was a trailblazer. The first black golf professional. He was a crown breaker. John Shippen Jr. paved the way. John Shippen Jr. John Shippen Jr. John Shippen Jr. John Shippen Jr. is all of us. John Shippen's story is a forgotten story to the world of golf. We talk about Charlie Sifford, Lee Elder, and of course Tiger Woods, but no one has ever gone back that far to put him in as part of that history. Shipping was the Jackie Robinson of golf. He transcended golf in an era where no African Americans were playing golf. He made history three folds. First American, first African American, and the youngest American to ever play in a U.S. Open. John Shippen was born in Anacosta, Washington, D.C. in 1879. He came to Shinnecock, 
with his father and the family to administer the Shinnecock Indians. John was nine years old then, and he and other members of the Shinnecock Indian Nation actually built the golf course by hand. After helping to build the now famed course, Shippen took an interest in the sport. By the age of 16, the natural talent was working full time as an assistant, and in a few short years, became the first American born golfing professional. 1896, that was the first official USGA tournament out at Shinnecock. And no Americans ever played in the USGA tournament. The Scottish and Irish people were invited over to play. And the members of Shinnecock had entered John Chippen Jr. to play in this event. He was ostracized by the players that came from Scotland, calling them the colored boys, that they did not want to play with them. He was only 16 years old. He finished fifth place, and after that, he played in five U.S. Opens. But when you look at the history of the game, Shippen should have a place in the annals of golf for what he did. Shippen's golfing pursuits were in stark contrast to the norm in the early 1900s, when black golfers were largely prohibited from playing alongside white men and women. There was something about him that apparently piqued the interest of those that played the game at that time. He was always somewhere being snuck on a golf course where he couldn't play to play the members. He played this whole eastern seaboard from New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Long Island. But after years of plying his trade on the road, a new home emerged in 1921. Shady Rest is important because it was the first African-American country club in America. This was where African-Americans came to have a good time and feel free and not feel threatened about anything. Duke Ellington, all of the big bands, they were here. Althea Gibson taught tennis. They had a tennis court here. Uh, they had the golf course. John got to become the pro here in the late 20s when he stayed the head pro here for 25, 30 years. He lived right upstairs on the third floor. He just loved playing golf, and he loved teaching golf to the members of the club. John Shippen's story to me is very relevant with everything that's going on today in our society. I think this is a good time to know about the past. It's super important to tell John Shippen's story and inspire the next generation because they're the ones who are gonna change the game. We've made progress along the way, but there's still much to be done. It's really important to know that history because I think that the faces of American golf started with a black man is, is pretty important. He was such a mature young man and to really just come out and set the example, and now we're following in his footsteps. Coming out here and playing in these tournaments is extremely important to show that we are doing this for him, to honor him, to show that we now have these opportunities and we're super grateful for them. The John Shippen Cognizant Cup, now in its third year, has a significant impact on the future for one of the nine women in the field, as the winner of this 18-hole event will earn an exemption into the LPGA Tour's Cognizant Founders Cup. Defending champion LaCara Abe takes their early lead on a chilly, windy morning at Upper Montclair Country Club in Clifton, New Jersey, but a triple bogey on the back nine contributes to a five over 77. Coming out and having a good 18 holes last year and getting the chance to play the ship, and I definitely think it helped my belief system. So you know you're not as far as you think you are from, from competing out here. Yeah, like Harvey, she was killing it. She hits the ball pretty long. I was just trying to grind, 
Honestly, I was just out there trying to have as much fun as possible. That was my goal, was just to have fun and appreciate the moment of being on this course, playing where the LPGA is playing. Colorado Springs resident Paige Crawford is able to take advantage of the windy conditions. I love the wind, so I was able to hit a lot of knockdown shots, which growing up, that's what I would do in Colorado. And I was just so happy to play, honestly. The 31-year-old happily walks off the 18th hole, unaware that her 75 is the winning score, earning a berth into her first LPGA start, a goal realized she won't soon forget. I am just proud of it because, you know, if I meet some little black girls, who, you know, want to play golf or are playing golf, I can say, I played in an LPGA event, and you could do the same thing when you get a little older. And hopefully, you know, one of us will win in the future, and then I think more and more black girls will play. I just can't wait for that. <laughs> it's 2023, we should have more on tour. <laughs> Monday we had the John Shippen Cognizant Cup and it was Paige Crawford who was the winner and that gets her a spot into the field here at the Cognizant Founders Cup. It's her first LPGA event. Allowing us to have the opportunity to play in the LPGA event, it's amazing. I'm just, I'm so grateful for this and I know this really helps us like want to play golf. My first hole I ended up birding and then the last hole of the tournament, I ended up birding. So I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> Crawford's journey into full-time professional golf started years ago, and she has clung to her determination to chase her lifelong dreams. I was playing three to four events a year. I worked at a climbing gym and the golf course, door dashing at night when I could, trying to save as much as I could. And finally, I got a van. And I was like, you know what? I don't care if I run out of money. I just want to quit these jobs and at least try. What I want to take away from this experience is knowing that I do belong on the golf course. Being the only black person, you see it, you notice it, and people notice it too. And sometimes you feel out of place, but I feel like this week, I do belong on the golf course. I do belong here. I hope to inspire young black kids that they can follow their dreams. They can play on the PGA Tour, the LPGA Tour. We'll find a way together for you to get through. Welcome back to the John Shipping presented by Rocket Mortgage. We caught up with John Shipping Cognizant Cup winner Paige Crawford and took a ride with her in her home away from home. Baby dog, you gotta get in your seat. Okay, you gotta get in your seat. Go girl. Good girl! Oh, good girl! We love just picking random places on the map, like, oh, this sounds interesting. I like the name of it, and we'll just go and see it. Mia, why are you staring at me? What do you want? Do you need water? you need water? Are you thirsty? That's always the purpose, getting to a tournament. So along the way, I find courses I can practice and play at, find places we can park overnight, um, find places where I can work out. Okay, it says right here on your right. Cool. Yeah, we cannot stay here tonight. <sighs> nope. I love nature. It, it's therapy for me. It helps me refresh. Golf can be stressful, tiring, and being out in nature just balances me out. The birds, the greenness, the river. I think you also have to think a lot on a golf course. Being out here and just walking, mm -hmm. you can turn your brain off a little bit. Yeah. And just like, just be in the present. Are you hungry too? Let's go eat. Let's go find a place to cook some dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Mia, you want to play? Are you gonna read? You can read to me. We <laughs> <laughs> get all cozy. I realized when I try to breathe in and can't, when I feel the heaviness of my broken body, that I should believe everyone who tells me how sick I've been. 
thank you for dinner. Of course. Thanks for doing the dishes. <laughs> Mia, you're so cute. <laughs> Wagging your tail. Thinking that's going to help you. Good night, guys. Megan met at a climbing gym. I, we had a mutual friend and she introduced us and it was just instantly we just had like a good friendship because we had golf in common and climbing. Starting route to 11935 Fowler Road. Proceed to the route. I have a trainer, Nate Jackson, who is in Canada, and I followed him on Instagram before he became my trainer, and he reached out after seeing a documentary about me, and I was so happy because I felt like that was a missing part to my game. I love that he made a program based off what I have on the road. He has to be creative to figure out, you know, what I need, and I'm so grateful for him. When I'm on the LPGA, I think it will be hard to do van life full time just because they travel to so many different places everywhere. But if there are events like in the same area, I would love to do van life still. So hopefully that will work out. What a beautiful day to play golf. At the John Shippen National Invitational, one word was used by Paige and her competitors to describe round one. I feel like it was a grind. I'm not gonna lie, it was definitely a grind. The front nine proved problematic for the field, with nearly one third of the holes scoring bogey or worse. The number one thing was just to stay present. All I can do is just hit the best shot possible. Putts weren't really going in, making really stupid mistakes here and there. Alethea Hines and Madison Barnett called three over 75s to enter the final round tie for third, but all eyes are on Anita Uwadia and Paige Crawford. We were pretty much battling it out, and I really enjoyed that. She is really fun to play with. Both ladies enter the back nine at two over par. Crawford adds birdies on 14 and 17, but a double at the last puts her in solo second through 18. I hit a poor drive and really couldn't go for it, so I had to lay up. I hit a decent shot, but I ended up three-putting it. So it's kind of sour to end to the day, but I'm optimistic about tomorrow. Uwadia, on the other hand, catches fire, birdie in three of her last five holes. I felt like I really zoned in. Just got to stay one shot at a time. I know putts are going to drop at some point. I just try to stay present and just believe that I will shoot a good score. Wadia sits atop the leaderboard at one under, three strokes ahead of Crawford entering the final round. Stay consistent, still keep doing what I'm doing. You can't really force a win. If you stay present and you trust in your game, things are gonna fall. And I'm just trying to play my game and not really worry about scores. We just finished our first round and wanted us to all get together. What does it mean to actually be a black woman in golf. When you get to the golf course, how do you feel? Are you, is that something you're thinking about? I get nervous. And why is that? Because you don't find a lot of black people or black women at golf courses. You get nervous just yeah. because you don't know the type of people you're gonna encounter mm -hmm. when you're there. So I, I feel like you're constantly, you're walking on eggshells until you get comfortable. No one understands what you're going for, like I can just remember. You're the only black person on your team, right? Yeah, you're the only black person on your you're team. You're the only and, black like, person on your team, Bailey, also? It's so funny Same. when they're like, oh, you were the first. I'm like, well, yeah, no, you were. <laughs> you being out west, what what was that experience like, you know, as a black woman on the golf course? I can only imagine you were probably one of the few. Yeah, I was definitely, growing up, I played golf with my dad. I never saw a black woman playing golf, so. Never? Never, never. And. Being in school, too, in Montana, you feel lonely at times, you know, and people just know you because you're black, you know? Yeah. <laughs> black girl. Just like, oh, there's Paige. Oh, yeah, the black girl. My story, like, coming from Nigeria, like, it was a little bit different. 
because I didn't know I was black. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Yeah, because you know when you grow up. No, because everyone Ooh, looks like yeah. everyone looks like you. You're in Nigeria, everybody looks like you. You That's don't really point. know like the difference between, you know, white America, black America. The N-word meant nothing to me in Nigeria. You know, it was just <laughs> just make you wear black, I guess. So when I came here, I mean that's serious, like it just I didn't know I was black. What kind of effect do you think that that has on your mental game when you are playing golf? Because a lot of our competitors really don't have to think about an extra element. When I played at the US Open last year, I was the only one. It was kind of intimidating because all eyes were on you just from that standpoint, because when people make stories, they don't make stories about your golf. They make stories about the, pa the fact that you're African-American. When I came out, it was one, it was just me. It was nobody else. It's amazing, I actually feel like I have a community. Like beforehand it was like, okay, I'm the only one out here, yeah. you know? You, did, you kind of felt lonely. Well, you know when you're walking and then you see a black person coming towards you and you have that like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just know that they're like, they're coming yeah, to you. Yeah, they're coming to you. You just, yeah. cause I mean, obviously you can pick, you can pick every black person out. And so you are, you just have that connection. Like, yeah. Especially, <laughs> especially in Montana, it was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's another person, they're not gonna, you know, it's just, I, so yeah, there's that camaraderie. Yes. You know, <laughs> you know the knot. I will say though, the one thing that gets me every time is like, people be like, are you Anita? I'm like, <laughs> people think, I know, I know. Sometimes I'm like, I'm like 50 shades darker. There's no way. <laughs> you know what? I don't know, you don't know. My mom's white. And when we were at a tournament, my dad wasn't there. And I was playing with this girl. And her dad was like, which one's your daughter out there? And she's like, oh, the one in the, the, one in the pink. <laughs> and then like two months later, which one did you say was your daughter? <laughs> the only one standing in the fairway in the pink. Okay. Um, so uh, thank you, ladies, you know, for getting together and, you know, discussing our experiences. I say tomorrow, Go out, play your best golf, have fun. Nice, yeah, good job, girls. We're back here in Motor City at Detroit Golf Club where my co-host Shasta hit the course with a couple friends. I don't wanna hit that four iron that hard, bro. That's gonna throw my back out. <laughs> I love hands like that. Like that's gone. Get out. The commonality between you all three is that you've had your PGA Tour starts. This week you're playing the John Ship and Men's Invitational here at Detroit Golf Club and for another opportunity to play in the Rocket Mortgage Classic. How do you feel? We have an opportunity to get back out there and play on the PGA Tour, it's big. For someone at the shipping to do this for us again for a third straight year, it's an amazing opportunity. After you get that itch of being out there and learning what it's like and knowing that you can compete and you can make it, gives you that extra push to go a little bit harder next time and make sure that you're doing the right things. That's end over end, in the center of the hole. Quinn, you are the youngest in the group turned pro in 2022. How does having early starts help you feel more comfortable with more opportunities that are coming your way? All of my starts, I learned pretty valuable lessons. Really about taking that back home and working on it so that you can apply it to the next one. Mike, how are you being able to balance being a father on tour and having that support base to still pursue your dream? It gets a little difficult at times, but it's all worth it. And I know if I play well and do what I need to do, that eventually he'll be taken care of. Most of the tournaments, if not all, we are forking out our own expense, right? To pay for events and all the expenses that come with that. With the John Shippen, you don't have to worry about that. It's definitely a treat. I think everyone who uh, comes to this event is excited just because they really roll out the red carpet for us and not having to pay for a hotel or rental car. On top of that, we have a purse this week, so it just kind of sends the message that everything's gonna be okay, no matter what happens. I really appreciate it because, you know, it's not often that you get to play in stuff like this. Okay, guys, obviously it's cloudy, rainy skies today, but we're hoping for dry, sunny conditions at the 2023 John Ship and National Invitational. And I wish you guys the best of luck this week and see who comes out on top. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Much. Appreciate Thank you. it. Appreciate it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the first round of the John Chippen National Invitational. Quinn Riley gets off to a hot start, birdie in the first two holes of the day. While Michael Herrera follows up an opening bogey with three straight birdies of his own. Marcus Bird cards six total birdies for a three under 69, sitting tied for fourth alongside amateur Troy Taylor II, who's making the most of his opportunities. This is where I want to be, and it just gives me a taste of where I want to be, and it makes me want to work even harder so I can be out here. A fellow Michigan State Spartan, Andrew Walker, sits alone in third through 18 holes, but the chase is on at the top of the leaderboard. Joey Stills birdies three of the final four holes for a five under 67, matching the low round of the day with Chase Johnson, who looks to rebound from his shortcomings just a year ago. Last year, I was tied for first, and then I had a couple bad breaks, and a couple of the flaws were exposed. So I've worked really hard, and I've seen a lot of success, and it's been paying off. Michael Herrera sits in the tie for eighth at even par, one stroke ahead of Quinn Riley, while Chris Dial slips from contention with the double bogey at the last as Detroit Golf Club delivers on its promise of a true PGA Tour test. Few are more thankful for the opportunity than West Africa's Jean Romaric Jesu. It's a dream. It's a dream because I never dreamed that we're playing one day on a golf course where the PG12 players play. It's a real pleasure and a dream to be here. In February, the 26-year-old moved from the Ivory Coast to Florida to pursue his dream of one day playing on the PGA Tour. Since we live in Orlando, I had a chance to go to Hill for the first time and watch them during the Arnold Palmer Invitational. I'm not that far off, more practice, and very soon, I think, I will be there. While an opening four over 76 puts his tour dreams on hold, the experience is simply a stepping stone to a bright future in professional golf. This really motivates me even more to play with you know, all those golfers together in one place. It it's only motivates me to do better and, and become better. With bad weather expected for Sunday afternoon, nine holes of the second round are played on day one to avoid any possible delays in the final round. The biggest thing was just relocking in and staying focused. It's so mentally draining out there when you're fighting for every shot. The good thing about it is, is just you get the opportunity to go at it again. Taylor continues his strong play going bogey free in nine extra holes, while fellow amateur Marcus Smith fires three under. Herrera puts himself in the hunt with five birdies to climb all the way to third, four strokes behind Johnson, who picks up where he left off, grabbing hold of the outright lead heading into Sunday. It's nice to just keep it going. I was driving it well, I was putting well, I was hitting my irons flush, so 27 was actually kind of nice. Back in Grand Rapids, not one, but two exemptions are on the line into the Meyer LPGA Classic for Simply Give and the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. Welcome to the final round of the John Shippen National Invitational. Amateurs Ashley Shaw and Marley Franklin bounce back from tough opening rounds, each card in an even par 72, placing them fifth and sixth on the final leaderboard. I think I represented myself well to all these other golfers, and I just think it's just an opportunity that you don't get anywhere else, really. But it's University of Delaware's Christina Carroll who records a one under 71, locking up a third place finish and low am of the week. It makes me feel great. Just try to focus on having fun, and I had a great caddy out there, so we're having a blast. Round one leader Anita Uwadia struggles on the front nine bogey in five of her last seven holes before making the turn. I didn't do anything wrong. I hit some solid shots. 
today I was like, I don't have it, I'm gonna play for that. And then I started hitting it really good. Paige Crawford adds pressure, shooting one under on the front to take the lead with nine to play. I was just really clutch on my distances with my irons. I was really happy about that and giving myself opportunities to make birdies. Luadia doesn't back down, battling back on her closing nine with the clutch eagle on 17 to stay in it. I can't get down on myself for hitting a bad shot. The whole time, I knew I was playing good golf, that I did everything I possibly could. Crawford answers with the birdie on 17 to maintain a one-stroke lead with the title up for grabs at the final hole. Coming down the stretch, I had no idea where we were, honestly. I lost track. When there's pressure, I tend to play better. Both ladies keep it error-free to close with the par as Paige Crawford goes back to back, becoming the first player to win two events at the John Shippen. Thank you. Uh, great job, Paige. Yeah, great job. Thank you so much. Good job. Nice yeah. play on you. So Good job. It's great. We have been really fortunate enough to be involved with this event and to be able to hold an exemption for the Meyer LPGA Classic. So look around here because this is your home next week. It is really my honor to present you with the exemption to the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. I want to thank my parents, too. They have always believed in me and always wanted me to keep pursuing golf no matter what. I really appreciate them, all the support they have given me throughout the years. So, thank you. Thanks. Let's give it up for our 2023 national champion, Paige Crawford. With the women's competition all wrapped up, nine holes remain for the men to lock up a PGA Tour exemption into the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Amateur Marcus Smith plays error-free on his remaining nine, carding a four under 68 to finish solo sixth. While Troy Taylor II records his second straight three under 69 to secure a runner-up finish and is crowned the low amateur. For me, it was go have fun. I did pretty much everything I could do played my hardest and I left the course just knowing that was the best I could do. I was proud of myself, I stayed in it. It was a testament to where I'm trying to go in my game and the strides that I'm making. Four birdies on Marcus Bird's closing nine place him in solo fifth, one spot behind Andrew Walker who finishes tied for third alongside Michael Herrera. A bogey free closing nine gives Herrera the low round of the day with a five under 67. But Chase Johnson runs away with the lead with birdies on three of his last five holes. My mindset today was to come out and make as many birdies as I could so that anyone who was tied with me or behind me couldn't catch me, even if they had the chance. Was playing just really solid and the putter got hot, which is needed in a nine hole stretch. Johnson shoots 68 in round two and nine under on the tournament to claim the 2023 John Shippen National Invitational. To win this event, I'm very excited to be able to represent everyone who put John Shippen together. I can't wait to represent them, and hopefully I can do it well. How are we feeling? A lot better. I had a chance last year, didn't take advantage of it, but we did it this year, so it feels even better. Congrats, Tom. Thanks, Tom. That's awesome. Proud of you. And the winner of the John Shippen this year, Chase Johnson, earning $20,000 for the This is an absolute honor, you know, thanking my competitors. We had a great match uh, the last couple days, and thank you guys so much. I lots. I'm just so proud of him, and I'm happy for him. Thank you. Big opportunity. Thank you, John Chippen. Oh, yeah. We're feeling good. We did good today. All right. Sounds good. Love you, Pop. Bye, Dad. Man, my boy got the LV track man case, no, dude, dog. This is, my, this is my buddy. This is my mentor. He just, like, he tells me to take off with it. You think I'm going to have a Louis Vuitton case, man? I'm just saying, bro. I mean, oh, yeah. you... That, that uh, shipping check went quick. <laughs> <laughs> Check that.
baby. What's gonna be some of the equipment changes that you make going into this week out at the Rocket Mortgage? My three iron is my gamer. I love it, but it's uh, outdated and they don't make it anymore. So they're building me a backup of that. And then the biggest thing that I'm interested in is the introduction of a seven wood into my bag. Thank you. Appreciate it. So talk to me about the advent of this cross-handed wedge approach. Where did this start and how did it catch on and stick? I actually used to chip left-handed as a drill in college and was actually really good at it and then was just really struggling with short game. About a year ago, I was with my dad and I was getting ready to go to a tournament and I was like, it can't get worse. So let's just try it. And that day with him, I was seven for seven with two chip-ins. And after that, I was like, yeah, I think we're gonna stick with this. I can hit up the 70 cross-handed. 60 is kind of like the cap. That's a nice little thin. See, Roger, I told you they were forgiven. <laughs> Man, just go out there, have an amazing week, but I'm sure that you're going to take care of business, man. I appreciate it. You, That's the goal, one shot at a time, and we'll see what happens the rest of the week. Just wanted to show you a video real quick. Check this out, man. Hey, Chase, what's up, man? Ricky here. I uh, just want to say congratulations on winning the John Shipman, and we'll be seeing you a lot around uh, Detroit Golf Club this week for the Rocket Mortgage Classic. So good playing, congrats, and we'll see you there. That's awesome. <laughs> man, Ricky's, Ricky's one of my all-time favorites. Like, when I came out here, I don't get, like, starstruck by a lot of people, and Ricky definitely is one of them. In preparation for his second career PGA Tour start at the Rocket Mortgage Classic, Chase Johnson had the chance to meet not one, but two of his golfing idols. Tony Finau has always been one of my favorite players. He's definitely a person that I would love to actually officially meet. My second shot showed, showed me a lot. Goodness gracious. He just hit a three with 275 into the wind. Both 2023 John Shipping champions teed it up alongside PGA Tour stars and other celebrities in the Area 313 Challenge. And Paige Crawford found herself victorious yet again. Opportunity lies ahead for Crawford as she'll tee it up with Madison Barnett at the Dow Great Lakes Bay Invitational. On the men's side, their champion made his presence felt in round one of the Rocket Mortgage Classic. From West Palm Beach, Florida, Chase Johnson. The young man from Kent State making his second career PGA Tour start earned his way in on the golf course. It's an amazing opportunity for him. He's an accomplished player. I don't think it would be a surprise to see him play well. After a two over front nine, Johnson settles in with four birdies on the back, including three straight to close out the first round at two under par. He's really adapted, he's really evolved the last few years and he's completely changed his game and now it's really starting to pay off. Johnson continues his momentum on Friday, going bogey free on the front nine, moving to three under par. All you can ask for is the chance to, you know, show yourself and what you're capable of. Despite a bogey on 11, two birdies down the stretch, move him to four under par and inside the cut line, making Johnson the first male from the John Shipping to play the weekend at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Hopefully that's just the first of many. A lot of these guys who I played with this past weekend, they all got game. Hopefully this helped open some more doors. The obstacles minority golfers face are real. And while events like the John Shipping National Golf Invitational begin to offer some opportunities, it's still important that we sustain and find ways to create more of them. And good luck to Chase Johnson in the final round as he continues his own golfing journey as our 2023 champion while honoring a forgotten pioneer of the game. Thank you for watching the John Shippen presented by Rocket Mortgage. Take care, y'all.